I'm Lucas Kendall. And I'm Robert Nathan. And we wrote and executive produced Lucky Bastard, which Robert directed. Lucas came to me uh, to talk about various ideas that interested us that we wanted to write. The ideas in the movie really come from things that actually happen in the porn industry. We're in pornography, but our problems are the same as everywhere else in the world. Everything's fucked up, people are morons, you can't get good help. The bosses are assholes. The bosses are assholes. We could be selling insurance in Peoria. There are many different reactions we get to this movie based on uh, age is a big one. And there are sort of cultural differences that, that reactions that people have to the movie where some people are uh, just find it horrifying that anyone would, would make a movie about this and other people say, I don't, what's the big deal? Look, I know these guys. They raped a friend of mine, they're bad guys. It's just a job. Oh, sweetie. Oh, get in here. Untie her. You untie her. No, I am not taking my eyes off of you. Untie her. The other thing, when Lucas first showed me and said, let's write about these people, when he first showed me this notion of a contest, it then raised the question of who wants to volunteer for a contest to sleep with a porn star? Now, your immediate answer is, well, some guy who wants to sleep with a really hot babe wants to sleep with a porn star, but I don't think that's a big enough answer. There's something else going on there about exhibitionism, about the connection with some kind of hypersexuality that psychologically is not your ordinary guy. Hey guys, it's Dave G here. Just wanted to say what a huge fan of Lucky Bastard I am. I don't know, some folks might think it's weird to want to fuck a porn star, but I think it'd be pretty fucking awesome. Oh boy. The entire culture that we live in has people who want that kind of public atten attention exposure. We want to, to, to bear ourselves in public, foreshadowed by Andy Warhol saying, I guess 35 years ago, 40 years ago, everybody will be famous for 15 minutes. You're gonna humiliate these guys. Yes, that's the joke. It's it's like Queen for a day. They would find this this housewife and give her a washing machine. Oh, what? So I'm the washing machine? Yes, that's brilliant. It's you. We find you know, like regular guys and give them a porn star. But what we were really interested in was depicting pornography and the industry in a really different way than had ever been done before because the people we had met in the industry and the people we had met who knew people in the industry and particularly the performers everything has changed it used to be a kind of seedy business and even the people of course who owned it were not the most respectable people in society now it's owned by ordinary businessmen and now many of the performers who used to come into the industry and already be suffering from all kinds of social deprivation like they were drug addicts or alcoholics or terribly abused children, what you meet now in the industry are people who are just looking to make more money than they can do doing something else. I am a single mother whose ex-husband loved Crystal Meth more than he loved me. Mm, yeah. Is that adult enough for you? Actually, please stop this shit. Mm. Later, you will come home with me, and you know what we're going to do? Uh, my taxes. Yes. Do my taxes, baby. I think sexuality has gone so many strange places in our culture that we can't say, oh, this is necessarily bad for the human being doing it. But what we can say is that the people who do it are not the same people who did it 25 and 30 years ago, where you found large numbers of people working in pornography who really had led terrible lives as children, who really were abused and sexually molested, who really weren't in it just for the money, but were in it for all kinds of other reasons, and had probably serious personal needs for attention. I think that still exists, but we wanted to investigate that. And what we've ended up doing, really, in the process, is making a movie about people who we hope the audience understands aren't so different from the rest of us. Where did you learn how to do that? Piano lessons. You don't have to stop playing. Don't film me playing. Hang on. I can film you fucking on the piano, but I can't film you playing the piano? Oh, were your parents loaded or something? No. I used to play the piano, and now I'm a porn star. Why? That's what I want. There's hardly a story ever been told where, in some sense, we have a family. Every movie in the world has a family. Every television show in the world has a family. 
And then some outsider comes into the family and disrupts the psychological dynamic of that family. This is porn sex, right? It's a little uncomfortable. So you just follow Ashley's lead because she knows what looks good for camera, right? Tell him, Casey. Yeah, you just pretend like the camera's not there. OK. Right. Hope you don't pop too soon. I'll be all right. I mean, you've seen the website, right? Some guys can't get it up. Some guys pop too soon. And if you come too soon, all we can really film is you going down on her. And that's kind of lame. The thing you, we most talked about, and we talked about as we talked narratively, when you and I were writing the movie, about how the outsider comes in and sort of vaguely knows what he's in for. He has some sense, because he's seen the website, that he's going to be humiliated as the outsider and they're going to be slightly making fun of him. But he does it anyway, because he really, really wants to have sex with a porn star. What he doesn't know is, is what he's really getting in for. Don't laugh at me. Hey, settle down there, Bevis. <laughs> I want to fuck her. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Come on, when do I get to fuck her? <laughs> All right, calm, calm down, bud. This is, this is not even close to the funniest thing we've ever seen in this business. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. I guess so. I'm, I can't breathe. <laughs> All that aside, it's a good story. In the end, it's a story about people's behavior. It's about a family and how families, people in a family relate to each other. It's the story of the people who are not all good or all bad. It's the stuff that literature we want it to do for us, which is to remind us of the depth of humanity in people. It has all the standard things that a story has in it. It's not that unusual. It's not that narratively unusual. No, it's um, not, uncensored isn't the word. It's it's unfiltered. Yes, we don't clean it, up it, humanity. Right, and it's not, I mean, what good is it to make a movie independently if you can't do something completely different? And even in the context we've found of independent movies, I mean, this is not something people have been able to categorize. It's not quite genre. It's not quite art house it's not quite I mean it's, it's not a comedy it's not a drama yeah. it's not a it's not a, a adventure movie it's not a slasher movie it's not um, a social comment movie it's not a message movie it's a piece of all of those things and none of those things yeah.